Welcome to 2021 Putnam County Museum Annual Meeting held virtually due to safety concerns. I am Board President Larry Tippin. Today's agenda, we have an introduction to board members, a president's report, a financial report, committee reports, and board member election announcement. We're now officially called the meeting to order. As you're aware, we had only one business item which was the election of one new board member. The results of your battles will be discussed in a few minutes. The introduction of the board members. Bylaws of the museum call for three-year terms with an option to renew for a second three-year term, at which time the board members are required to step off the board for at least one year. Members in the last year of their second three-year term are Sue Murray and Mary Zirkel, who is the secretary of the museum board. Members in the second year of their second three-year term are Margaret Kenton, Murray Pride, who is the board treasurer, and myself, Larry Tippin, the board president. Members who have completed first term and beginning the second three-year term are Gwen Morris, the vice president, and Jordan Vaughn. Members who are in the first three-year term are Mike Sullivan, who is a previous board member who's returned, Steve Bonney, and Alice Greenberg. Many thanks to the hardworking and dedicated museum staff, Lisa Mock, our executive director, Kathy Chigetta and Jody Matthews, museum assistants, and Alex South, the collection manager. During 2020, the museum hosted a number of programs and events. In January, the museum hosted a presentation by James Champion about John Dellinger and his brief but eventful visit to Greencastle. Also in January of 2020, we hosted the Lego Birthday Bash in collaboration with Greencastle Parks and Recreation Department. In February, we hosted a Putnam County Boy Scouts reunion coinciding with Scout Sunday. On Valentine's Day, an old trail end sweetheart dinner took place for a sellout crowd. The annual student art show had more than 400 people in attendance for the awards ceremony. Then in March, the museum closed after following the guidelines of the Center of Disease Control as well as state and local officials. Staff members continued to work remotely for a period of time. After a lockdown, we were able to open on a limited basis by following the Center of Disease Control's recommendations on limiting the number of participants, offering hand sanitizer and requesting masks being worn in the building. Following these guidelines, the museum opened an exhibit highlighting the accomplishments of Cassie Hunt, a former North Putnam track star. June through August, we hosted the Putnam County Adults Artist Show in conjunction with the Greencastle Arts Council. In August, the O'Hare family was celebrated with a founding family event that was safe and socially distanced. Starting in September, the Pacific and Eastern Model Train Club re-erected the master train boards and ran trains for the public every Saturday. At Christmas time, they ran a special Polar Express train. As far as research, writing, and interpretations, work commenced on a new history of Putnam County to co coincide with the bicentennial of the county. Articles on Putnam County, the Depression, and the banks of Putnam County were written by Malcolm Romine. Jenji Bingham is working on a history of automobile dealerships in the county. Anita McNulty is researching and writing about the county's many groceries. Malcolm also finished research and writing about all the covered bridges that have existed in Putnam County. Museum staff assisted with procuring photos from several sources, including the Indiana Historical Society and Ball State University. This will be published as a pictorial book in, all, in early 2020. Four issues of the Museum Newsletter of the Arch were produced in 2020. New contributing writers have been welcomed. Rita Schindel is to be thanked for more than six years of laying out each issue of the Arch. We wish her well in her future undertakings. Research continued on artifacts and exhibit materials. As far as outreach, a website has been given a facelift and new features have been added, such as the opportunity to make a monetary notion, donation with a click of a button. Sharing our stories is a new area on the website where we can share remembrances of the people, events, and anecdotes of Putnam County. Our Facebook and Instagram followers have increased and monetary giving options 
have been adding there as well. During 2019 up to March of 2020, the museum hosted monthly live presentations highlighting the tiny towns, advantage, villages of Putnam County. Since we were not able to hold large presentations, those have been recorded, including the ones previously presented and uploaded on the museum's YouTube channel. There are now more than 30 presentations available on the museum's YouTube channel, including those as well as the, the first Putnam County Hospital, reminiscences of 1940s schools by James E. Bingham, and a wonderful 1937 movie of Central National Bank. As far as grants giving and membership, the membership, the museum participated in the Payback Protection Program by receiving a loan, which has been forgiven. A CARES grant from Indiana Humanities was received, also received were NAP credits to sell to raise funds, NAP tax credits. A Putnam County Community Foundation grant was received to conserve and restore the Elisha Cowgirl paintings. We also received various private donations and other funds to acquire artwork. We participated in the nationwide Giving Tuesday and Shop Small Saturday. We continue to participate in the Give Back programs of Amazon Smile and Kroger Community Rewards. COVID impacted our fundraising efforts in 2020 and depressed the number of member renewals. We lost two founding members of the museum in 2020, Rhea Sutherland Zeiner and Dr. John Boffman. As far as collection preservations, as of the end of 2020, the permanent collection includes 5,329 objects, 1,214 photos, 1,063 library items, and 31 archive items. We expanded the storage capabilities for quilts, textiles, and small artifacts, and reorganized the entire permanent collection and organized three-dimensional artifacts by specific collection categories. Work has begun on collection assignments for two-dimensional items, which are being scanned and added to the database. This will save wear on the objects, and they won't have to be removed from safe storage every time. This project has also included correcting and expanding description of objects in the database. Policies for temporary custody and past perfect were refined and updated. Procedures for classifications, cataloging, and evaluations were also refined and updated. As far as the museum board, we learned to Zoom. After March, museum board meetings have been held virtually. We've started work on a new strategic plan and we reorganize and revitalize the board committees. As far as the buildings and grounds, the museum secured a commercial mortgage and purchased the entire building and grounds in January of 2020 and performed various structural improvements to both the new part and existing museum area. We are currently leasing the space in the larger building to Elite, Elite Cheer and Dance and DePaul University. In addition, a new HVAC unit was installed above the office area of the museum. At the same time, air exchangers on both rooftops were open wide in accordance with Center of Disease Control recommendations. Through means of private gifts, landscaping in the parking lot was undertaken. Asphalt was lifted, dirt was hauled in, native trees and shrubs were planted. Rustic fence sections were installed and everything was mulched. This creates an area for picnic tables and seating to be placed safely out of the way of automobile traffic. Non-native invasive species of trees, shrubs, and ground covers were removed from around the building. I feel the museum has accomplished a great deal since its inception, and we look forward to a bright, productive future. I hope as a fellow museum member, you agree. Now the report on the financial health of the museum. Here is Treasurer Murray Pride. Thank you, Larry. Uh, I'm Murray Pride, treasurer of the uh, museum board, and uh, I'm here to review the finances of January to December of 2020. Our uh, balance sheet shows our assets at 797,959, and our liabilities and equity the same, 797,959,92. Our profit and loss sheet from January through December of 2020 shows us with a, a profit, an income of 254,560.57. 
that we had expenses of $386,895.74, and it left us a deficit of one thirty two three thirty five seventeen. dollars But of, the, of that uh, expense, we uh, paid $137,073 of those expenses from our building improvement account. Uh, when you subtract that out, we showed a net income at the end of the year of $4,794.52. Our income was down by 19793 from 2019, and we had a shortfall in the income of, from donations, events, and gift shop sales primarily due to the problem with uh, uh, the COVID. I think uh, finishing the year with a positive uh, income, uh, being in the black by $4,794 is a tribute to the hard work of our director, her staff, and our uh, supporters of the museum. Even with those issues, we were able to end the year in the black. And again, uh, we want to thank all those people that continue to support the museum through this uh, difficult year. Uh, the American Alliance of Museums has stated in an article that one of, in three museums throughout the country are in danger of not uh, surviving. And we have uh, stayed open um, and we've ended the year in the black. And it, with those uh, difficulties that we faced, we were able to make several improvements in our building uh, during the year. We put a new roof on approximately two, two thirds of the building uh, new roof and gutters on the loading dock. We added uh, new restroom heaters, an HVAC system in the office area. We did an electrical upgrade, a security upgrade, and we upgraded our security cameras. Uh, we built a back wall in the kitchen area from the floor to the ceiling. We expanded our ethernet by one new station and we improved and expanded our website by making uh, our bookstore available online. You we have several YouTube videos that are now available online and donations and memberships are available online. We had one major fundraiser during the year. Uh, our Valentine Sweetheart Dinner uh, was a, a roaring success. If you assess the year, um, we came out again with a positive in the black, and we made tr a tremendous number of upgrades in our building. And again, we want to thank those people that continued to support us throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you, Murray. Gwen Morris, our board vice president, also chair of the programs committee, will now show her report on 2020 program accomplishments. Hello, my name is Gwen Morris, and I'm vice president of the museum board and chairman of the program exhibit committee. The program and exhibit committee has started the 2021 season where it left off in 2020 with the Putnam County Student Art Show. The show opened on March 2nd by appointment only and is currently exhibiting 103 works of art from students in grades K through 12. This show runs through the end of April. Folks can also view the show on our website. A huge thank you to Mickey Meehan and Mary Zirkel for their continued hard work on this project. The museum staff also deserves recognition as well. The O'Hare family exhibit remains on display from the summer of 2020. Their family had a portion of their annual family reunion 
at the museum. The Cassie Hunt Sports Memorabilia continue, continues to be on exhibit as well. The 15 Cowgill paintings have started the process of being conserved and restored this past October. This endeavor was made possible by a $15,000 grant from the Putnam County Community Foundation. The remaining paintings will travel to South Bend in groups of five to continue the process of conserving. The museum will continue to exhibit these paintings as they await their process. Coming exhibits include the Rotary's 100th anniversary, an exhibit of Dr. DePauw memorabilia collected by Dr. Warren Macy. We will again host the Putnam County Arts Council when they hold their annual show July through the end of September. The founding family exhibit will be the Kaufman family coming this summer. Other exhibits will be coming as well as we look forward to being able to open once again. If you are interested in serving on the program committee, do not hesitate to co contact the museum office or myself. Thank you, Gwen. Founding family exhibits are a part of programming. Jordan Vaughn is organizer for families who wish to participate. Here's Jordan to say a few words about that endeavor. Hey guys, I'm Jordan Vaughn. As a member of the uh, Putnam County Museum Board, I also serve as uh, coordinator of the uh, Putnam County Founding Families Program here at the museum. We are constantly searching for local families with a rooted history in area dating back to the 19th century that also have heirlooms or other items of significance related to the Putnam County family itself. The program was founded by Malcolm Romine in 2008 and has included more than 20 exhibits of families from all corners of the county. Currently, the O'Hare exhibit is on a display. We're looking forward to our next participant, the Coffin family of Bainbridge, in coming months. Anyways, I'm very glad to be part of this organization and look forward to the future of her past. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Alice Greenberg recently became chair of the Programs Committee. She has the following report to make. I am Alice Greenberg, chair of the Membership Committee. The Membership Committee is charged with developing categories of membership and benefits, as well as assisting staff with planning the annual meeting. During 2020 and early 2021, the committee met several times to review membership categories and benefits that had been in place for a number of years. We made recommendations for minimal changes in categories to the board, as well as aligning benefits. These benefits include a subscription to the quarterly newsletter, ARCH, an invitation to the annual meeting, which allows you to participate in the business of the museum, invitations to special events through the year, and the ever popular 10% discount at our gift shop. We appreciate the support of each member. Our three-person committee welcomes additional members with ideas and enthusiasm for promoting membership in the community. Thank you, Oz. Here's our newsletter editor, Steve Bonney, with a few words to say about our publication, The Arch. Hello and welcome. I am Steve Bonney, board member and editor of The Arch. Last year, we were able to publish in Mail Quarterly and are on schedule to do that again in 2021. I became editor to fill a need, and I have been blessed with talented contributors such as Mike Goss, Jensie Bingham, and Dr. R. Stephen Irwin. The essays of Livy Miller Ashby have been made available by Laura Scott as well. Many others have assisted by answering questions and providing guidance. I would like to tell you how I became an editor. First of all, there is nothing in my background that says I should edit. After I joined the museum and became a docent, I was asked to write an article, which I did. I found that I enjoyed the writing and the research. When the position of editor became available, I was asked if I would be willing to do that. I agreed, not because I was an editor, but so that I would have a place to submit articles. I enjoy the writing and research. My goal as editor has been to provide readable and factual stories about life in Putnam County in days gone by. 
To continue that will require two things. First of all is the continuing support of our members. Without members, we are an empty shell. Secondly, we need stories. Please contact the museum at 765-653-8419 or info at putnamcountymuseum.org if you have a story to share, either verbally or in print. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Steve. Now the chair of the Governor's Committee, Sue Murray, will give a brief update on 2020 governor's issues and announce the outcome of membership voting on a proposed new board member, Laura Scott. My name is Sue Murray, and I have the opportunity to be the chair of the Governance Committee for the Putnam County Museum. Now, some of you might ask, what does a Governance Committee do? Well, let me start by telling you what we don't do. We don't assess acquisitions. We don't curate any kind of exhibits that come and are put out by the museum. We don't put on the fundraiser. We don't do the newsletter. But what we do do is work hard to establish the efficacy of the business of the museum itself, of its board of directors, of its committees. We talk about policies and procedures, bylaws, planning for the future. And this time of year, we talk about making sure that board positions are filled and that we have a slate of officers to bring to the annual meeting. I'm really proud to say that Laura Scott is our candidate for a new position on the board this year. Those of you who are members had an opportunity to learn a little bit about Laura and to cast your ballot. Hopefully those all came in because she will be a tremendous board member. Laura has a plethora of experience. She has spent most of her life in Putnam County, raised her two children here, and is part of a family who has lived here for generations, dating back into the early part of the 1800s. So she will be a wonderful addition to our board. Continuing for a second three-year term, most fortunately, and we're grateful, are Gwen Morris and Jordan Vaughn. Also continuing our is our executive committee and grateful for the fact that next year Larry Tippin will still be our president, Gwen Morris our vice president, Mary Zirkel our secretary, and Murray Pride our treasurer. This is an extraordinary group of people who has worked so very hard during these difficult and uncertain times and we're grateful for their leadership and we're grateful for having all of you with us today. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Sue, and welcome aboard, Laura. The officers and committee chairs have informed you of how we move forward during an exceptional year, but I'd also like you to give a thought of how far the museum has come since its creation. To speak on that topic is Gen Z Bingham. I'm Gen Z Bingham, a founding member of the Putnam County Museum. In the middle of the 1990s, beloved local veterinarian Dr. Don Bratton was president of the Putnam County Cemetery Board. County officials assigned Dr. Bratton an office for the board in the old Jones School. That office contained a desk, a chair, a filing cabinet, a wastebasket, and a west facing window, lots of sunshine. Dr. Bratton was active in the Putnam County Historical Society, the entity that was looking for a location of a proposed Putnam County Museum. Dr. Bratton turned over the Jones School office to the museum backers, and he served as the first president of the fledgling group. The first museum director actually lived with the Brattons until she could get established. Donors immediately brought in artifacts, relics, treasures, and junk. Retired circuit court judge Sally Gray gave up her lucrative senior judgeship so she could go out and raise funds for the museum. Sally got blood out of every turnip in town. 
and it was Sally who spearheaded the move to our present location on North Jackson Street. Community response told us that, that folks were interested in preserving and protecting our heritage. And Malcolm Romine moved back to Putnam County and he brought his checkbook with him. Aura May Durham remembered us in her will. Dr. John Boffman published his local history essay book with the proceeds coming to our group. People with special talents have shown up to lend a hand. Our executive director, Lisa Mock, has a degree in history and classical studies from Ball State. We have a terrific staff in place. The board members have executive experience and financial expertise. The upkeep is very expensive, but we have a great location, fabulous collections, and a fund housed in the Putnam County Community Foundation where you may send your deductible financial support. Send your yearly dues to the Putnam County Museum, 1105 North Jackson Street in Greencastle. Support our museum. Thank you, Gen Z. Without the strong business model developed by our founding members, we wouldn't be here today. Diverse financial resources are necessary to stay in operation and fulfill our, our mission to collect, preserve, and interpret the natural, historical, and cultural heritage of the county. Speaking to those needs is Malcolm Romine, a great supporter of the museum. As a retired project manager with Eli Lilly, he's accustomed looking at the big picture. Malcolm has a few words about sustaining the museum big picture. Malcolm. Good afternoon. I'm Malcolm Romine and I will be talking to you about the museum's need for financial sustainability. The museum now has a permanent home that has space for more and larger exhibits, more storage space, and plenty of parking. However, that emphasizes the need for it to be in a position to always be able to meet its financial obligations whether it's for insurance, mortgage payments, or some other unplanned maintenance bill, such as roof repair or conditioners. This points out the desirability of having a steady income to meet its obligations. The museum receives absolutely no support from local or state government. All the museum's help is the financial support that we receive from you or from local companies. And a donation to the museum is tax deductible since the museum is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So if you're thinking your next tax filing and you're one of those that need to make a donation for tax purposes, please keep the museum in mind. Or if you're checking out an exhibit at the museum that you especially like, show your appreciation by making a donation. Another way you can help is to encourage a friend or a neighbor to become a member of the museum. The museum's income sources are annual membership and donations, programs dedicated to fundraising, rent income, grants, and gift shop sales. Some examples of fundraising in the past are a roast a celebrity program that we had for Jensi Bingham, Eric Bernsey, and Daryl Thomas were some of the willing participants to be involved in the roast. More recently, there was a program where we had an auction for specific purposes or the use of items such as a vacation condo for a week, or an airplane ride with J.R. Scott to be won by the highest bidder. The museum now has a contract to rent the south end of the building for 10 years. This is a big help now, but wouldn't it be nice for the museum to eventually have the entire building available for its own use so we would not have to count on rent income to help pay the mortgage or other financial obligations? Grants are for, always for a specific use, and we certainly need them, they're quite useful, but they cannot be used to help out should an un unexpected expense pop up to the museum. Ideally, the museum needs a regular income that's large enough to meet its needs. I remember years ago, uh, Sally Gray was telling me that uh, when the 2008 recession hit, the usual $1,000 donors to the museum the following year only gave $100 and the $100 donors didn't give at all, leaving the museum sort of high and dry. However, the uh, museum's rent payments 
were still, still coming in, still coming due. And then about the same time, I think it was 2011, Therese Cunningham was the uh, president of the museum. And she's somewhat a worry wart like me. And she was two or three months during the winter time. She was really quite concerned that the museum would even be able to make, it, make its uh, right payments in uh, February and March. Well, the museum did, but it was a tough ride. And it, <laughs> Therese was a guy that was behind her successfully. The first year the museum was organized, an endowment fund was set up for the museum at the Putnam County Community Foundation. This provided the means for the museum to receive the interest income from the endowment fund each year in perpetuity. However, the endowment provided little interest income in its early years just simply because it was new and it was fairly small. However, a few years ago, the museum had the good fortune to receive significant bequests from the estates of R.B. Durham, Mary Lou Miller and Sally Gray. Thank goodness those three had the foresight to include the museum in their estate planning. Now the interest income from the endowment is big enough to really give the museum a big help, but it's still, we still need to grow its endowment more to help its financial sustainability. So we ask you, as you do your estate planning, please remember to consider including the museum in your estate plans. The museum's endowment fund is with the Putnam County Community Foundation, and any check for the museum's endowment should be made out to the Putnam County Community Foundation. However, this is really important. Always remember to write on the check that the check is for the museum's endowment fund. Otherwise, the uh, foundation staff processing the uh, check will not realize the check is for the museum's endowment and put it in the uh, foundation's own uh, general fund, leaving the museum out in the cold. We certainly don't want that to happen. So when you include your museum, when you include the museum in your estate planning, our executive director, Lisa Mullock, would certainly like to know about it. And this would help in our ability to have a better handle in our future planning needs. The museum's accomplishments and growth in those last 20 years and the short history of the it's really something we should be proud of. Please support the museum by including it in your estate planning to help us in future uh, endowment grow, fund grow. And this will help us to uh, achieve the goal to have an endowment healthy enough to sustain the museum's financial future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Malcolm. Recognize the importance of funding Funding for the future is the first step. The second step is actually giving an order to achieve and ensure our aspirational goals. When we receive your membership renewal form this spring, please consider making an additional donation. As to our aspirational goals, Gwen will give a brief overview of the strategic plan that is currently being created. Another project the board has worked on these past few months is the strategic plan. Each committee, including governance, finance, membership, programming, and finally communication, has worked diligently to write their goals, objectives, and strategies for planning their continued work for the museum's future. You will be able to see this document posted on our website Thank you. Thank you again, Gwen. I'm looking to the future with excitement and pride. This is our final report. Including, in concluding the museum, I'd like to say thank you for attending. Please check out our website and YouTube channel to view this meeting again. Good day.